Okay, let's move on to part two of Wednesday's lab. This lab is called Drill Some Wells. We are going to start by drilling two wells into our aquifer, and then we're going to drill three more wells so that we have too many wells and see what the effects of drilling these wells has on the water table. Remember, that is the level of groundwater as well as the San Joaquin River. So let's start with just two wells. Uh, keep your model exactly the way that it was at the end of part one. We're going to add two non-flowback wells. Non-flowback wells represent the way that we use water in the valley for agriculture or city purposes or household purposes. A flowback well is a more industrial use of a well, and this is used to pump petroleum or oil out of the ground. Uh, typically in a process called fracking, where the water is injected into the ground and then the oil rises to the top and the water comes up with it, but then the water is put directly back onto the ground. We don't do that. So we're going to choose non-flowback wells. So click it and you get this cute little black well looking thing. We're going to put two of them into our aquifer. I'm going to put one right here. And in order to drill it deeper, you need to just keep clicking on that well until it gets as deep as you want it to go. And then let's add a second well somewhere. I'll put one here. And again, drill it deep. That should work right there. Okay. Next, we need to change our rain probability. We need to adjust it so that it's more like Kerman. Kerman is not 100% dry. Kerman is not 100% wet but we are more dry than wet. So I'm gonna put it maybe like right there, about a third of the way up from no rain at all. This will make it more like Kerman. So again, we're trying to make this more and more like the San Joaquin Valley. We have the San Joaquin River, now we have a couple of wells, and now we have some water, uh, some precipitation that pretty much mimics what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play on the model. And you want to wait until you've seen significant drawdown in both wells one and two, significant drawdown. So you can see already how we have some of uh, these cones, These it's called a cone of depression in groundwater science. We have these cones filling in right here where we have dry land. It's pumping up all the water like so. And notice what the water table is doing. It's actually starting to drop below the level of the San Joaquin River. That's going to have a pretty significant effect on the San Joaquin River itself. And I want you guys to try to figure out what that effect might be. Once you have a decent drawdown, uh, I would say at this point I have a pretty decent drawdown. Oh, here comes some rain. I'm going to pause it. And then I will ask you to go back to your lab slideshow. And on slide number four, you have two questions that you need to answer. Pause this video now, please. Answer those two questions and then come back because I'm going to show you what to do for slide number five. Okay, moving on to slide number five. I had originally called slide number five drill too many wells because that's essentially what we're going to do. We are going to keep the rain exactly like it is right now, pretty close to Kerman conditions. We're going to keep the two wells that we have, but now we're going to add three more wells. The simulation will allow you to have a total of five wells, and we're going to put them all in. So anywhere you wish. I'm going to put another one right here. Again, drill it down deep into the aquifer. Put one over here closer to the river. What I'm doing here basically is I'm setting up an example of what over pumping might look like. If we have too many wells trying to get to the water at the same time without enough precipitation, allowing water to refill the wells, we're going to end up with some pretty bad conditions. So now I have all five wells. I'm going to hit play again. What I want you to watch is what's happening to the groundwater level, of course, what's happening to the river, but also watch the wells. See if any of these wells go dry. They're pretty deep, so they might not, but they might also go dry as well. To figure out if they're going dry, you have two ways to look at it. You can either look at the little blue blobs, the dots that are moving up and down the well shaft, or take a look over here at this well output graph. Ignore these two up here at the beginning. But these two right here, the pink and the blue, this is from well number one and well number two that we had from our previous trial run. Now we're going to see a uh, different colored pink, uh, black, and then an orange as well line show up. If any of these lines hit bottom, if any of these lines hit uh, zero well output, that means that the well's gone dry. So let's watch for a little bit. 
As you are watching this model simulation, you have two questions to answer over on slide number five. So watch this play through a little bit. See if you can make any of the wells go dry. And then when you're ready, please go answer the two questions on slide five. Wow, look what's happening to the San Joaquin River over there. We're pumping out so much water that it looks like the river's gonna go dry. And let's watch well number three there. Well number three is about to go dry. Oh, thank goodness we got some more rain. All right, I'm gonna pause my video. I need you guys to do the same. Go through your own simulation. Answer these questions, please, over on slide number five. Thank you.